Welcome climate viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's July 31st, 2018, and I really, really, really would like to go to the Harp Open House. Um, just heard about this. Uh, it's going to be August 25th, 2018. And I just want to get your opinion, you know, um, every time I do a GoFundMe, I get, you know, the, the trolls come out of the woodwork, but you tell me, I mean, is this something I should even pursue or, or am I just dreaming here? Um, anyway, my work is over at climateviewer.com. Uh, it's free. It's open source. Um, I only ask that you, you know, support me monthly on Patreon or give a one-time donation on PayPal. But regardless, this is my HARP page. It is available at climateviewer.com slash HARP, H-A-A-R-P. And it's called HARP and the Sky Heaters. And you know this you know particular page was cited by dr rick shankman on mit's university website climate x and you know it's a frequently asked question page where you can learn you know what is an ionospheric heater why heat the ionosphere do they affect your brain and my essential reading all the articles that i've written on harp um in addition you can come up to the top and basically let me go the other way uh, go to archives and go to ionospheric heaters and see you know some of the recent works i've done on this about trump space force artificial gravity waves coming from harp um you know chemtrails from space china's new harp uh the twisted tree mystery electromagnetic warfare in the olympic national forest um, and the Russian woodpecker about how ELF is able to manipulate weather. Did Harp destroy North Korea's nuclear program? Harp back online. Al bakes Alaska Alaskan sky tomorrow night, where I talk about Chris Fallen and all the guys up there, and I've interviewed them. Um, that sort of thing. I even interviewed the U.S. Naval Research Lab. Um, so it would be a dream to go to Harp. Uh, I've talked about it for seven years, and what do you know? They're having an open house. Um, it's coming up August 25th, 2018. It's in Gakona, Alaska. Um, it's going to be a very long flight, obviously. I've already gotten an offer from a friend who said he could pick me up in Fairbanks and drive me there. And this would be the opportunity of a lifetime because I have a lot of questions. And, you know, they basically say that, you know, there's going to be educational periods during this question and answer sessions. I'll get to tour the facility. Um, obviously, I've got a very good camera, so I'd be able to take many photos there that, you know, and, and I know what to look for. So, um, you know, I got a Nikon Coolpix P900. Um, you know, with the world's longest optical zoom, be really fun. And I want to be that fox right there. You know, I want to be that fox walking around the field of antennas and, you know, checking it out for myself because I've done a lot of research on it, but I've never actually been there. Um, and this would be the opportunity of a lifetime. So, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. What do you guys think? Should I, you know, even attempt to do a GoFundMe to go to this thing? Um, you know, it, it would be absolutely amazing. Uh, my wife would like to come with me. She could actually um, hold the video camera on my cell phone because that's all I have right now. Um, but at the very least, we could, you know, possibly do some interviews with scientists up there and ask them these tough questions that a lot of you have, just like me. Um, and I've done my homework, uh, you know, it wouldn't be the first time I've interviewed somebody about HARP. In fact, I went to the U.S. Naval Research Lab, um, booth at the Weather Modification Conference at the AMS 2018 conference, and, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun interviewing them. You can see the footage 
on climateviewer.com. Don't talk about HARP, U.S. Naval Research Lab at the AMS. Let me let you guys check a little bit of that out. They do Neat. Of physics and stuff like that. Cool. Um, but yeah. Are those cupcakes? Yeah. <laughs> those are some cute cupcakes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. It's so describes. I. You know, I'm not familiar with each one of those. So, so where's HARP at? HARP. So what is? Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's really not great. So not in there. there. Uh, you, you, you uh, that, that's free space that. antenna range. What is that? Yeah. Where, where is that? That's right here. Um, do you know that one? Free Space Antenna Ring. Yeah, it's Pamunkey. It's yeah. our Pamunkey facility. Okay. Maryland. Is that uh, Maryland? It's Haystack? No, no. MIT? It's in Southern Maryland. Okay. So it's in Charles County? Okay. Indian Head, Brands Road. Okay. But anyway, yeah. we, we, uh, Stennis. That's uh, the big <laughs> the cloud making rocket down there. Yeah. That's my uh, yeah. yeah. So most people here. Do you have anybody from Stennis here? I haven't seen anybody okay, yet. Okay, I haven't either. It wouldn't have surprised me though. And then that's our Patch River guys and, and um, Tucson, our yeah. squadron. Yeah. And I, can, I can't read that one because it's like Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay. Bay. Yeah. So we have a Chesapeake yeah. Bay yeah. facility yeah. on the bay yeah. that um, our fire research is moving to. The, first time the, the what fire? Star? Fire research? I thought you said star fire, like no. the optical no. pond. So we used to catch a ship on fire. And they're moving it to um, very cool. Where very radar cool. Came out of. So, so, how much? How much do you know about ionospheric modification? Too much. <laughs> but we have <laughs> that's probably out of our um, DC, DC and we, our, one of our guys just left. Um, okay. Yeah. Andy Nichols and, also for cases, um, and Chris yeah. Engler, who is going to be speaking at two o'clock yeah, we'll out of our space science division. With okay. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a fascination yes. for me. I have a bunch of questions yeah. about it. Um, I, I know that the, the, the Naval Research Lab got with the U.S. Air Force, and you know, for the design and mod, you know, modeling of the Harp facility, that you know, that it's used for basically controlling the ionosphere. Yeah. We don't talk about the heart facility anymore, do we? Or do we? <laughs> I know that it was sold to the University of Alaska. We work there, and now it's like, yeah. don't talk about it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, but here's an email. Yeah. This is our space science division. Who would know about that? Okay. Yeah. And I would email them, and they will answer you. Okay. Um, well, the, the, you guys, the Naval Research Lab, have retweeted me a couple times talking about heart. So on Facebook, yeah, or on, Twitter? Uh, on Twitter, yeah. I, whenever you guys uh, made the largest, the densest plasma cloud in for the longest time in history is five minutes made a plasma fireball in the ionosphere. I had tweeted some stuff about it and the Naval Research Lab retweeted me. Um, I've actually mapped out every ionospheric heater on the planet. They're on my map, climateviewer.org, and I happen to know just about as much about ionospheric heating as anybody on the planet. So what I was just hoping to do was talk to somebody about the whys and what fours of it, because I'm that I um, could give the, when yeah, they cer come back to certainly. the booth because you're not scheduled to be in the booth, but I could give them your yeah, card. Certainly. Um, and that and would be, um, yeah, certainly. That would be one of our can, He could check out my video stuff. on YouTube, sure. How Harp Really Works. It's well over 100,000 views and climbing. But, yeah, I mean, it's a fascination of mine because, you know, even the guys upstairs at the Weather Modification Conference, um, you, you bring up ionospheric modification. Everybody runs like cockroaches when you turn the light on. Um, and honestly, you know, treaty issues aside with NMOD, it's a real gray area. And I have, all, in fact, I have them all right here in my book sack. Um, you know, all of the discussions that have gone into this, you know, between the you know, United States Navy, the Air Force, the joint um, programs, and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I have a very big YouTube channel and, and you know, Facebook and all that, and I have three websites. So we talk about this sort of stuff. I did a GoFundMe to come here, and people want me to ask some hard questions. And honestly, like this ionospheric heating thing, it's pretty fascinating. Um, you know, with the Russian government saying things like what they say about heart, um, they say it's a mind control weapon. And of course, I think that's stretching the truth also, but I don't think there's ever been a real discussion in public with straight faces about ionospheric heaters Yet, the kinetic guys that are over there, they own the Tromso in Norway. I'm going to go ask them next. Okay. And I'm going to go harass the, the Raytheon guys who built the antennas. Okay. But why not? I mean, this is, well, if, yeah. if, it, if it's on the up and up, yeah, and if it is, 
The name what is everybody? probably, you know, we're going to speak in a different way than other public people, but no. I'll have them reach out to you. I would appreciate it. I have no lots of questions. Okay. And basically, inquiring minds want to know. And well, with with a lack of yeah, yeah. 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 yeah with with a with a lack of credible evidence and somebody to actually tell the truth yeah. about this stuff, conspiracy yeah, theories yeah. abound. Yeah, and the one of the, my website is where conspiracy meets reality. So we don't like conspiracy theories. We try to get hard facts from people, map it out, make timelines, all that sort of thing, so that people can understand. Look, the U.S. Navy is doing something that started in the '60s. And you know, ionospheric modification started that far back with sounding rockets. About the time we banned the upper atmospheric nuclear explosions, they started using sounding rockets and, and heaters and stuff. So the fact it's just that it has such a long history, but nobody's willing to talk about it. So that's why there are so many conspiracy theories. We just like to get past that and say, you know. Could you explain to me just realistically why the military would like to control the ionosphere? Because they tried with the Westford needles and that was a horrible, um, you know, incident in scientific history. And now we're at a point where they're cooking the sky in 17 different locations worldwide. And then I, I asked people about it. I don't want to talk about it. I really appreciate no you worries. talking I'll, to me. But yeah, get that. This is my, this is my website business, okay. but these are my, my you know, Okay. Websites that deal with that weather modification history and climateviewer.org. We've actually mapped out all the ionosphere heaters. It's on a cesium. Uh, you guys are using it right there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. If this video resonates with you, leave. So, as you can see, you know, they were kind of freaked out by my questions, and that was the U.S. Naval Research Lab. Um, to, to have an opportunity to be able to go to the open house where they're kind of stuck, you know, and there's going to be a room full of people there. Um, obviously, I would have a camera. Um, it could turn out to be pretty freaking epic. Um, but I would love to go to this. And, you know, I, I was contemplating it earlier tonight. You know, is this even feasible? Um, and I just wanted to get some feedback, you know, on what you guys think, you know, sh should I go, should I even try to go, it'll be very expensive, um, and I hate to fly, you know, it's like an 18 hour flight, oh my god, um, but regardless, you know, I've covered this in depth, you know, ionospheric heaters, how HARP really works, um, you know, this, this article has been, you know, reposted more than any other article I've ever done. I did it in 2014. Uh, the video I did on it has 130,000 views and it's nothing but the truth. You know what I mean? So, um, when I was talking to Chris Fallen, who's doing the harp, the, the harp, Gakona harpoon experiments, you know, I was breaking his gonads on Twitter and he you know basically was running away from my questions and you know they wouldn't have that opportunity if i were to actually go to the open house they certainly aren't going to kick me out when i you know paid to show up um but it would be a great opportunity to go and you know like i said i have mapped all of this out in 3d it's available on climateviewer.org links are in the details you can check out the map but it, that's not the only, you know, facility that I would like to hit up if I do get the opportunity to do this. Because right up here near Fairbanks, where I would be flying in, here's Fairbanks, right near that is the Poker Flat Research Range, or Rocket Range. And they've got a harp up there as well. It's called the AMISR. It's a, actually called the Poker Flat Incoherent Scatter Radar. And it's uh, like a baby version of heart. So, you know, I got the dual purpose uh, ability if I were to make it up there um, to, you know, go and, you know, literally tour these facilities that I've read about my whole life, mapped out and everything. Um, go over and check out the rhyometer uh, at Poker Flat as well. You can see that right there. Yeah, you know, these antenna ranges and the screwing with the ionosphere is a fascination of mine. My nickname's resonated and I'm, you know, very fascinated by all of this. So 
the ability to do this would be amazing. Um, you know, to take my wife with me would really comfort me. Uh, I usually get very stressed out when I do these trips. But, you know, it's totally up to you guys whether it's even possible. So, I did look into it. Uh, you know, I did some flight checking and all of that sort of thing. Oh, it look like, looks like it's disappeared off the screen now. Great. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see, is it still here? Our open house, and, uh, trip built to airlines, is it there? No, it wants to be a start over, but regardless, it was like, uh, I think it was $1,200 round trip just for the flights. Uh, then we have a trip of four hour drive uh, from Fairbanks down to Gakona, Alaska. Um, and I looked into Airbnbs. They're pretty cheap. You know, you're talking like $99 a night here, maybe 125 So anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks a night for an Airbnb. And we would only be going from, we'd have to leave Thursday uh, the 23rd to make it there on the 24th around noon so that we could be at Harp at 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 because if you you know go and you read the details on this they're like well you can take the tickets by round trip trip bus tickets here but when i looked into that that's not really doable either because basically you leave um fairbanks at five o'clock in the morning get delta junction seven o'clock arrive at harp at ten o'clock the thing starts at nine and you leave heart by two. So, I mean, it's only four hours and I'd like to be there for the full day so that, you know, I can do all the exploring I possibly can. So if you guys are down with it, I'm going to make a GoFundMe and try to make this happen. Um, and you know, I've already got it. Like I said, I, I've got an individual who contacted me by email said that he has a, you know, a Yukon truck that he could pick me up in Fairbanks and get me down to Gokona. So driving's not an issue, but flying there, getting uh, Airbnb for a couple days, and then flying back, that I can do. Asking the tough questions, that I can certainly do. Um, I know everything there is to know about this uh, ionospheric heating device. And I would love more than anything to actually visit it, ask the tough questions, record the entire thing, and then put it out on the internet. And who better... Can. Record huh? what you can. Yeah, record what I can. Who knows, they might be like, uh, no cameras in here. But at the very least, um, I'll, I'll do what I can while I'm there and you know really get to the bottom of this because i have a lot of tough questions for uh these individuals who try to put such a smiley face on such a crazy technology and you know with your support maybe maybe it'll happen so you know i'm i'm looking at the facebook live chat and i'm seeing a whole lot of do it and, you know, it's really going to be up to you guys because, like I said, you know, it's, you know, $1,200 just for the plane tickets. Um, plus, you know, the Airbnb, uh, if we hit the mark and we, you know, get to, you know, where I can afford all that, um, what would be ideal is to also get a microphone and an actual video camera just on the happen chance that I am able to get an, a scientist scientists to sit down for an interview because I understand the technology and the terminology and I would be able to ask some very tough questions and there's nothing better than seeing <laughs> you know the, the the look on a person's face when they realize they're dealing with somebody who knows what they're talking about so I really appreciate you guys watching this I hope that you will support me on this I think I'm gonna do it just you know solely based on what I've seen so far in the chat um, yeah this this would be an amazing um, opportunity to really get some truth out there you know about the heart facility and others like it you know there there are several ionospheric heaters around the globe um, 
And I would love to, you know, not only ask them about HARP, but about the others because, you know, they all work together. They all share data. Uh, it's not a, you know, it's not going to be a surprise to them when I ask them about the one in Puerto Rico or the one in Peru. You know, you can check it out uh, over on uh, here. I'm going to bring this image up real quick. One second. And this is my, my harp map, my official harp map, uh, where you can see, you know, everything from around the globe that I've mapped out. And I would love to go up there and ask these tough questions. Please send me. It'd be an amazing experience for me personally. And everybody would benefit because, you know, I'd be the guy going, look, you know, if the Russians were able to manipulate the weather using ELF waves back in the 80s, and then the military created this in the early 90s, right after they blew up the Chernobyl reactor, which was powering the what Russian woodpecker that was screwing with our weather, is it possible that this thing can screw with the weather? If so, how? Um, and, you know, I have, I have a thousand questions I would love to ask. So that's my that's my idea for tonight. I hope that you guys will support me on that. I think I'm going to go ahead and create the GoFundMe. I want to get all of my prices together so I know what I'm talking about. But, you know, I can't afford this alone. Um, and I'm going to need your support. So, hey... If you want to see Jim Lee from ClimateViewer.com, go up to Harp and actually take a lot of photos, ask a lot of hard questions, and come back with some killer video, then please support me. Um, I will obviously make a follow-up video after I get the GoFundMe together, and I will um, you know, advertise it on my website and every video up until the event, obviously, because it's probably going to take some time to raise those funds. But just know this, it's August 25th, 2018, and the sooner that I get the funds, the cheaper the flight's going to be, and it's going to, you know, that stuff's going to go up in expense pretty rapidly as it approaches the date. And they're saying something about, you know, seating is limited. Uh, so who knows, you know, I don't want to, you know, get in on this thing too late and then find out that, you know, oh, we're full. Um, no hot dogs for you, Jim. <laughs> I do not eat hot dogs. Um, but regardless, I would love to go up to Harp and see it for myself and ask, you know, these guys to their face, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and you know, it's been a lifelong dream to see the Aurora Borealis, but <laughs> I don't think anything could top me going to the heart facility. That, that would be an absolutely amazing experience for me, you and everybody else. So please continue to support my work. Um, please come over to climateviewer.com slash harp and go ahead and read some of my research. You'll realize that I do know what I'm talking about. I'm armed and dangerous, um, and I have the information, and with that information comes power. And I will use that power to go up to Alaska and attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember. It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.